Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. Today I want to show you how to create procedural grass using a geometry shader in Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. In the previous video on grass rendering, I placed several meshes in a natural looking pattern to create a rolling field. Here, I'll use a special type of shader, called a geometry shader, to create grass using several layers of noise. If you've never messed with a geometry shader before, I recommend watching my introduction to geometry shaders video. I'll put a link in the corner. I use Unity 2020.1.10 F1 with Universal Render Pipeline 8.2.0 in this project. To get started, enable the Universal Render Pipeline by downloading the package, creating a settings asset, and enabling it in your project. Also, go ahead and create some meshes to test with. Then, add a new unlit shader file named Grass Layers to your project with a matching grasslayers.hlsl file. Download the nmg grasslayershelpers.hlsl file from the video description too. It contains some math that I'll be using in this project. To make sure everything works, let's first create a simple geometry shader that just renders the mesh normally. Open the .shader file. Change the shader name to grass slash grass layers. As for the properties, delete the main text entry and add a simple grass color field. In the subshader tags block, be sure to add this line so Unity knows the shader is compatible with URP. And set up the forward lip pass by changing the tags, adding dependency and keyword pragmas, registering shader functions, and including the logic file. We're done here for now, so open the grasslayers.hlsl file. Starting from the top, add lines to prevent this code from being included twice, then include some helper function files. Here are the data structures. We'll need the position, normal, tangent, and UV from the mesh. Note that geometry output contains the clip space position. Since we will generate points in the geometry function, it doesn't make sense to compute that in the vertex function. As for properties, add a float for variable to capture the grass color. The start of our function chain is a simple vertex function. It converts position and normal to world space using universal render pipeline helper functions. Moving on to the geometry function, right now we'll just render the original triangle, so the max vertex count is 3. Loop through each vertex in the input triangle and call this function to create an output struct for it. Inside, I calculate the vertex position and clip space and copy values to the output structure. Finally, back in the loop, I append the vertex to the output stream, creating an output triangle. The fragment function has to gather a bunch of data for a universal render pipeline's lighting function, which does the heavy lifting, calculating lights and shadows. To set it up, find the world space position, normal, and view direction, and then the shadow coordinate. As for the albedo, pass underscore grass color. With all that done, go back into Unity and assign your shader to a material. Everything should display as flat colored meshes now. Finally, we get to the fun part. Let's modify the shader so it creates several flat planes layered on top of one another. Later on, we'll cut away pieces of those planes and construct grass. Open up the shader file and remove the grass color property. Add a base color and a top color, as well as a total height float. Back in the HLSL file, define a constant for the number of layers we'll create. I think eight is a good start. Now we need to pass the layer height to the fragment function Storing it in the z-coordinate of the UV field sounds like a good idea. To accommodate that, change the geometry output UV to a float3. Don't forget to add variables for the new properties. In the geometry function, the max vertex count is now 3 times the number of layers, since we will create that many triangles. Loop through each layer and calculate alert value for the height. H will be 1 at the topmost layer and 0 at the bottom. Pass that value to set up vertex, which offsets the world position along the normal vector, based on the height. Now, successive planes stick out more. Don't forget to store the height in the UVZ coordinate. Back in the main geometry function, outside the triangle loop, call restart strip on the triangle stream. This tells the stream that the next vertices are not connected to the previous ones, meaning it should start constructing a new disconnected triangle. In the fragment function, Alert between the base and the top color, based on the UV's Z coordinate. And now we're ready to test things out again. Looks pretty good. Several layers appear where there was only one. In the next step, let's cut out holes in the planes to form grass. 
We'll do this by layering two noise textures together and discarding pixels if the combined sample value is too low. It's useful to have contrasting noise textures, one with white noise that creates tall blades, and another with cloud noise that creates gentle waves. Grab a few textures to test with, and make sure sRGB is unchecked in the importer. You might also want to disable or enable compression and mip maps. They can change the way things look. Once you're prepared, open the shader file and add these properties. A detail and smooth noise texture, and two float properties for fine-tuning each texture's influence on the shape. Open the HLSL file. Add variables for the new properties. Remember to write in the scale and offset vectors for each texture. They'll come in handy. In the fragment function, get the input UV and use it to sample both noise textures. This transform underscore text macro applies the scale and offset for each texture. Next, we want to apply the fine tuning multipliers. This math makes sure that if a multiplier is zero, that texture will have no influence on the grass. This clip function discards the current pixel if it's past a negative number. By discarding, the fragment function will return and the renderer will not render this pixel, a feature we'll exploit to cut up the grass planes. The best way to understand how all of this works is to see it in action. Load up your shader and try out a variety of different textures. It's pretty easy to get all kinds of different looks. But things do look static. Let's add wind. I'll use a wind noise texture to slightly perturb the grass UVs and vary that based on time and position. Open the shader file and add a noise texture property, a time multiplier float property, and a strength float property. In the HLSL file, add corresponding variables. In the fragment function, construct the wind texture UV by applying the scale and offset using transform text. Then add another offset based on time using the variable underscore time dot y. Pass the wind UV to sample the noise texture grabbing the X and Y coordinates and remapping them to range between negative one and one. Add the noise to the grass UV, but not before scaling by the amplitude and layer height. This last step ensures higher layers are more affected by wind, applying a 3D effect. And that's it. Set up your material how you like and watch your grass gently move with the wind. There is one more thing we can add, shadows. To get them working, we need to add a shadow caster pass to the shader. In the shader file, copy your lit pass and change the name, tag, and multi-compile pragma. Then, define a custom keyword needed to apply slightly different logic in the pass. Most of the Shadowcaster support code is in the NMG helper file, but in our HLSL file, we need to make two changes. In the setup vertex function, replace the clip space calculation with this one, which helps avoid shadow artifacts. In the fragment function, return zero immediately after the clip. The shadow caster pass does not care about color at all, so there's no need to calculate it. And now we have shadows. I noticed shadows tend to darken the grass a bunch, but reducing the height or increasing the number of grass layers does help. You could, of course, disable the shadow caster pass if your grass will stay on the ground. It would still receive shadows that way, but might look a little better. It's up to you. And that's it. I really like this grass rendering technique. Using textures to sculpt the shape makes it very versatile. In the next video on grass rendering, I have yet another style of grass to show, which uses a completely different approach. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss that video. I'd also really appreciate it if you could leave a like. It lets YouTube know to recommend this video to others, and it really helps out the channel. Of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment. How are you planning to use grass in your project? Is there anything else you'd like to see a video about? Thanks so much for watching, and make games.